EC 16 News at 11. Three sources have confirmed to CNN that U.S. Special Envoy to Ukraine, Kurt Volker, has resigned. Thanks for joining us on NBC 16 News at 11. I am Alexis Thrower. It comes just a day after the release of a whistleblower report flagging President Trump's controversial call with Ukraine's president. On the call, Trump asked the Ukrainian leader to dig up dirt on Trump's possible 2020 opponent, Joe Biden, and Biden's son. Volker was named in the report. He set up a meeting between Trump's personal attorney Rudy Giuliani and an advisor to Ukraine's president. The idea was to get the discussion about Biden out of the official White House communications. There is no evidence of wrongdoing by either Joe or Hunter Biden. Congress has said they will hold a deposition for Volcker next week. The State Department has not responded to request for comment. One of the people who figures prominently in the whistleblower's complaint is a former top prosecutor of Ukraine who investigated the Biden family's dealings in that country. NBC's chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel sat down for an exclusive interview with the former prosecutor. Tonight, House Democrats intensifying their impeachment probe, sending a subpoena to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo for documents relating to that July phone call between President Trump and the leader of Ukraine. In a letter, the Democratic chairman saying the president's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, who spearheaded the effort to investigate Joe Biden in Ukraine, has raised more troubling questions about State Department officials' possible involvement. Lawmakers pointing to the State Department's outreach to Giuliani. Top Democrat Adam Adam Schiff telling NBC News he expects the investigation to move quickly, likely wrapping up by the end of the year. We're going to hold hearings as soon as we can. Uh, we expect uh, subpoenas to go out, uh, more subpoenas to go out um, first thing next week as well. So we're moving with all speed. While Republicans tonight trying to discredit the whistleblower. This guy was out to get the president. So he's, his motivation, there's, there's questions there, his, and, and, and certainly didn't have any firsthand knowledge. The president lashing out, too, in this video of obtained by Bloomberg, speaking to American diplomats Thursday. You know what we used to do in the old days when we were smart, right? The spies and treason, right? We used to handle it a little differently than we do now. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi firing back at the president. It's really sad. We have to be very prayerful. And she's also taking aim at the attorney general, whose Justice Department initially blocked the complaint from Congress. Let me ask you about um, the attorney general. He's going rogue. NBC News has learned the president met with NRA chief Wayne Lapierre. According to the New York Times, there was a discussion about a providing financial support for the president's defense, including impeachment. Republican congressional hopefuls from Oregon's District 4 tell us they don't think the impeachment inquiry will affect their 2020 campaigns. Alex Scarlatos and Joe Ray Perkins are both seeking the District 4 nomination to challenge Peter DeFazio in 2020. They say they don't believe there's enough evidence indicating the president has committed impeachable offenses. These comments come on the same day the Lane County Republican Party opened their new office in Pleasant Hill. The local party chair says it's a crucial step ahead of next year's race. Uh, we're, we're kind of in an area where the uh, opposition is, has been overwhelming for us. And a lot of the Republicans that have been, uh, they kind of tucked in and went hiding. Now they're more coming out and, and uh, it's really good. The primary election for who will face Peter DeFazio for his fourth district seat will be held in May of 2020. Breaking tonight, Springfield police located a stolen vehicle occupied this evening on Beltline and Gateway. When we arrived on the scene, officers were searching the car in the parking lot of an Arco gas station. Officers say there isn't much they can confirm right now as the investigation continues, but they did tell us a person of interest was being questioned. Used needles are being found around Lane County. Residents in Junction City are concerned after finding a number of used needles in public parks where their kids play. Some say the parks aren't what they used to be. NBC 16's Kelsey Christensen went to go find out why the problem exists and what police are doing about the needle epidemic. 
It's a place where children play. You don't want to see where kids can't go walking through the grass with bare feet, thinking that they might kick a needle or something worse. After an unconfirmed report of a needle stick on a child at a playground in Junction City. There was one up here on the other side of the bushes here. Parents like Stacy Anderson are worried for their children's safety at Laurel Park where their family plays ball. I found four after an adult softball game. Sad to tell his 10-year-old that he can't play hide-and-seek in this tall grass and warning him about a stick. We had one report of an incident about six months ago. Where, Junction City um, Police Chief Bob Morris is calling littered needles a global epidemic, saying parents and residents need to be on the lookout, especially because the needles can hide well. Literally is like finding a needle in a haystack. To help combat the issue, Moore says the city is set to install surveillance cameras at Laurel Park, also in hopes to reduce vandalism. That will be monitored by the police department in real time, so as we see stuff occurring, we'll dispatch officers up there. But with many other calls to attend to. We can't be every place to find when people are throwing needles on the ground. It's like littering. People flick a cigarette butt down to the ground. Anderson says he wants to see accountability for those responsible. You can see the cars that are in the, the schools right there. That's our middle school. And a safer park for his son. Reporting in Junction City, I'm Kelsey Christensen. There are free needle drops at both the Junction City Fire and Police Departments. If you're stuck by a needle, seek medical treatment and let the wound bleed freely and wash it with soap and water. Looking ahead to the weekend, organizers are preparing for a suicide awareness walk in Eugene this Sunday. The annual Out of the Darkness Walk is part of a national fundraising campaign for suicide prevention, research, and education. Event organizer Sarah Schofield says around 600 people are already registered for the walk this weekend. And she says anyone is welcome to come support their movement this Sunday, even if they can't donate. For people like me, understanding that there's a community, knowing that you're not alone, both in your grief or in your struggles, um, is so important. And so I think the event is just really powerful. Schofield says last year there were able to raise over $40,000. Check-in and registration opens this Sunday at 9 at Alton Baker Park. Coming up next on NBC 16 News at 11, the end of the work week is here, and that means it's time for some Friday night fever. Another busy night in high school football. Hayden Herrera has your highlights and scores. And it was already much cooler all across western Oregon today. The rain showers moving in along with some snow showers. I'll let you know just how much and the record-breaking cold that moves in coming up next. Get ready, y'all. Meteorologist Josh Cozart. Well, it was another mild day all across western Oregon today as our temperatures managed to warm up into the mid to upper 60s. But right now, yeah, our temperatures dropping back to 52 degrees. Some wet roadways down below, and that will be a trend that we continue to see through the overnight hours. But our passes, yeah, they're getting a little bit on the wintry mix at this point in time through the Willamette Pass. Looks like mostly rain, but take a look at Santian Pass. Yeah, there's some snow flurries as the winter weather really starts to move in and will be sticking with us for the next several days. But here's our radar and satellite showing that rain line just to the south of the Eugene Cottage Grove area, still tracking its way further to the south and east. But as we zoom in, you'll really get in on some of those snow showers that we're starting to pick up over the Santium Pass at this point in time, and that will be a trend that we continue to see through the overnight hours tonight. And that has prompted the National Weather Service to put a winter weather advisory in the areas shaded in purple. This is for mainly elevations above 3,500 feet, but will continue for the next several days into our Sunday. But up for the valleys out towards the coast, rain showers will be on tap for us. Temperatures on the cooler side tonight as we manage to drop back in towards the upper 40s for our overnight lows. But some record breaking cold is starting to settle into our area, all due to this big dip in the jet stream, allowing some cold Canadian air to dive its way further to the south thanks to this low pressure system. And it really kind of stalls out over our area. High pressure really kind of helping this dip go even further to the south. And that's what's going to keep our cold record breaking temperatures in our area for the next several days. But our future cast does demonstrate that we continue to see the rain showers through the valleys out towards the coast through the overnight hours tonight. You'll wake up on your Saturday with mostly cloudy skies and rain showers very likely getting a quick little break for many of us in towards the mid morning hours. But once we roll into the afternoon hours, 
those rain showers yet again get going across our area. Very spotty in nature, not going to be a deluge all day, but definitely a soggy day on tap for us. But boy, the snow showers really continue to get going through the higher elevations again about 3500 feet and above is where those snow showers will be remaining for those of us in the valleys and out towards the coast, just keeping our rain showers and we are going to continue to see our rain totals even within the past couple of model runs slowly increasing. So anywhere from maybe a quarter of an inch to a half an inch to maybe some localized areas getting in close to an inch if we get a decent amount of rain showers and a heavy thunderstorm or two to roll over. But the snowfall totals, yeah, they're going to be sticking over the Cascades. We could really see anywhere from a trace right around 35,000 feet all the way up to the peak mountain peaks where we could see about eight inches of fresh snow before our daytime highs tomorrow really going to be on the mild side into the upper 50s to low 60s through the valleys and low 60s out towards the coast with spotty rain showers. Definitely a possibility, but record breaking conditions are likely for our Sunday. These are our forecasted numbers. These are the numbers that might be broken as we roll into our Sunday night, especially with freezing conditions returning. That's why we've gone ahead and prompted a weather warned day for our Sunday as frost will likely develop, but we do dry things back out for our Monday and Tuesday out towards the coast. We dry out yet again for the new work week and our temperatures hovering right around average down towards the Umpqua Valley. Still rainy tomorrow, slightly warmer than the Willamette Valley, but we do dry things out midweek. Alexis. Thank you so much, Josh. More than 100 protesters rallied outside Chase Bank in downtown Eugene today to protest the company's fossil fuel investments. Members of the climate action group Extinction Rebellion XR Eugene chanted, hey, Chase, this isn't funny. We need you to move the money. Then a trumpet played and the crowd laid down and played dead. According to a 2019 report, JP Morgan Chase and Company is the world's largest fossil fuel investor. There will be like no point of like having our education really if like we don't have a future. A future is important. I want a yeah. future. I don't want to just live and do a Chase account thing. I want to have a life. A spokesperson from JP Morgan Chase said in a statement, quote, we recognize the complexity of climate change issues and actively engage with a diverse set of stakeholders to understand their views. We firmly believe that balancing environmental and social issues with financial considerations is fundamental to sound risk management. They say by 2023, they will invest $1.7 billion towards these efforts. Tonight, Oregon Governor Kate Brown is considering several options to prevent deaths and illnesses linked to vaping. One of those options is a temporary ban on the sale of all vaping products in the state. Washington Governor Jay Inslee already issued an executive order today banning flavored vaping products. Governor Brown's decision could be made within days. A rising death toll and countless warnings from lawmakers and health officials has left many vape stores in our area reeling and from plummeting sales. Oregon Vape Society has seen a sales loss as high as 50% in just the last two weeks. Recent vaping related deaths and bans in states like Massachusetts have scared customers off. Pinnell says the if Governor Brown declares a ban, he'll have to file for bankruptcy. I have nearly 70 hours a week for a whole year tied up in this building. Um, I mean, r the reality is I haven't drawn a paycheck yet as an owner of a business. Although he's against a ban, Pinnell is interested in seeing lawmakers introduce legislation that will make it illegal for teens to get products. That does it for tonight, but the newscast isn't over. Time to hand it over to the Friday Night Fever crew. Hayden Herrera is back after the break with plenty of high school football action from around the area. Find out if your favorite team was victorious.